good morning and welcome to the Kingdom of Grace Ministries. God bless you and it's good to be here this morning. This is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Praise God. It's good to see everybody that's here. It's good for you to welcome, uh, for me to welcome you uh, by this broadcast. Uh, thank God for you and thank God for everybody that's here and that's joining us. Uh, this morning, we're going to have a, a word from Pastor Woodard this morning, but I wanted to greet everybody and have a prayer before we go into the service, but I also want to encourage everybody that right now, uh, as you come on this broadcast and as you sit here, that the Kingdom of Grace uh, thanks you for your support and also for your prayers and your words of encouragement, but we need your financial support right now in order for us to maintain and continue to be on air. So we want to make sure that uh, you have an opportunity to give, an opportunity to help others and bless others in Jesus' name. Let us bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, God, for your God all by yourself. You're our Father, and beside thee there is no other. Lord, we praise you and we reverence you. You're worthy to be praised, worthy to be acknowledged, worthy to be glorified. Lord, we just thank you in everything that we do. We give thanks, but we also give you praise. We praise your name. We lift you up, for you alone are worthy to be praised. God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the sending of the Holy Spirit to guide us, to anoint us, to keep us in your will, and to guide us to all truth. We thank you this morning. We praise you this morning. Lord, we ask God, each and everything, God, that has been a contrary to your will, we plead the blood of Jesus against it. We pray, God, that you give us spirit, Lord God, of repentance and a spirit of endurance, Lord God, to stand for truth and stand for righteousness. We pray, God Almighty, for each and every family here this morning, God. We pray for every family. Lord, I realize that so many people are going through so many different things. And we pray right now for each and every person. We pray, God, for the speaker of the word this morning that you would keep him and guide him through all truth. We pray, God, that we have ears to hear for faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we thank you, God, for all that you're doing. Lord, bless our families, Father. Bless our friends. We pray, God, for our nation. We even pray for our enemies, Lord, that you would help them to come into the knowledge of the truth. Father, we just thank you in all things. Lord, as we go through the feathers of this service, we pray, God, that you be with us and you would keep us. Lord, we pray, God, for those that contribute to this ministry through their financial giving. We pray, God, that you bless them some 30, 60, and 100 fold. We're praying, God, that you would be with us in all things, Lord God Almighty. As long, God, as you're with the Kingdom of Grace Ministry, we shall be okay. And we thank you, God, for that. So we say in advance, praise the Lord. And thank you, God, for what you're doing and what you're going to do. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Praise God. Praise God for each and every one of you. As right now, we bring up Pastor Woodard to hear from him what God has to say through him in Jesus' name. God bless you, Pastor. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. To God be the glory. Great things he hath done. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can we just give the Lord a good high note of praise? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Amen. Praise the Lord. Had not God been on my side. Amen. Where would I be? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. I'm just going to read one verse of scripture. It's going to be found in the book of James, and I'm going to read chapter 5, verse 16b, 16b, amen. James chapter 5, verse 16b, and it reads, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. 
Amen. May God's blessing be upon the reading of the word. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman availeth much. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Amen. The title <clears throat> of our message today is Armed and Dangerous. Amen. Armed and Dangerous. Praise the Lord. The powerful impact of prayer. Prayer is our passport to heaven. Amen. Anytime you go into a foreign country, you need a passport. Every, everybody can't just enter because there are certain requirements in order to enter into a foreign land. And prayer is our passport to heaven. Praise the Lord. Now, biblical prayer is relational communication with God. Amen. Relational communication with God. Prayer is not about transactions between us and God. It's about a relationship with the Heavenly Father. We're not having just a transaction going back and forth. That's what the heathens do. They only go to God when they want something from God. But prayer is about a relational communication with God. Praise the Lord. Now, the possibilities and necessity of prayer are the defining factors of the gospel. The relation that is established between the Father and the Son and the decreed covenant between the two has prayer at the base of its existence and the conditions of the advance and success of the gospel. So the advancement of the kingdom of God, the success of the gospel of people being born into the kingdom is founded on prayer. Praise the Lord. Now, it is through prayer that we overcome our adversaries and receive the inheritance that is due us. It's all tied to prayer. Now, when God instructs men to pray, it is imperative. It's not optional. It is the command of an almighty God. Imperative means all important, above all else. It's vital to your life. It's vital to your health. It's vital to your future. Number three, it's crucial. It's essential. You got to have it. It's, it. It got to be in your bag. It's necessary. It's indispensable. It's pressing. It's urgent. It is required. It's mandatory. It's exigent. In other words, it's requiring immediate action. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, Everyone should pray because prayer is the key to successful living. Prayer is a privilege, and there's nothing more important than prayer. When we neglect to pray, we open the door to failure. Praise the Lord. Our physical and spiritual life as well as the graces that God offers us are connected to prayer. Praise the Lord. Prayer is to communicate the sincere desires of our heart to God. We present our whole being to God in prayer. Through worship, through praise, through thanksgiving, through confession, and last, through our petition. Prayer also involves intercession on behalf of others. What does prayer do? Prayer redirects our focus off of us and our problems onto God. Prayer is the process that helps us to rearrange 
our priorities. By praying, we acknowledge that we have no power to bring about the things that we are praying for, but God has. Matthew 6 and 10. I'm going to read that. Matthew 6 and 10. Praise the Lord. Matthew 6 and 10. And it says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So the Bible tells us that God initiates his plans and purposes through people who pray. Prayer is an activity that requires active participation. Prayer is an activity that requires active participation. Listening to someone else pray is not praying. Praise the Lord. You can come to agreement, but listen to someone else pray isn't praying. It takes active participation to pray. Sometimes we want others to pray for us, but we do not want to pray for ourselves. It's okay for others to pray for us, but we should not give them the full responsibility of praying. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Each time God answers our prayers, it increases our faith. Daniel prayed even though he was in danger of losing his life. We must pray because we are in danger of losing our lives spiritually if we don't pray. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Prayer is the glue that holds the fabric of life together. Prayer must be initiated in the family first. If families would pray more, we'd have a better society, a better government, and we have better churches. Families that pray together stay together. Praise the Lord. The Bible says men should always pray and not faint. Pray before trouble hits. Then you're storing up your timbers in heaven. Because guess what? God checks your bank account and he checks your credit report. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. I'm going to read that. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 11 through 13. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. So, prayer has tremendous power when we fervently seek God with our whole heart. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous avails much, exhibiting or marked by great intensity of feeling. That's what fervent is. The Bible says when Jesus prayed that, that, that sweat dripped down like blood. Praise the Lord. Acts 1 and 14. I'm going to read that. Acts 1 and 14. Praise the Lord. Acts 1 and 14. All these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. So the early church 
devoted themselves to prayer. Acts 2 and 42. I'm going to read that. Acts 2 and 42. Praise the Lord. Acts 2 and 42. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Acts 2 and 42. And it says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. So in other words, the apostles gave top priority to prayer. Acts 2, 46 and 3 and 1. The daily attendance together at the temple was for the purposes of prayer. The reason they got to the temple was to pray. Praise the Lord. Jesus gave us an example of his disciplined life. The habit of assembling together, that's in Luke 4 and 16. The habit of sharing the word of God, that's in Mark 10 and 1. And the habit of prayer, that's in Luke 22, 39 through 41. Luke 18, 1 through 8. I'm going to read that. Luke 18, 1 through 8. Praise the Lord. Luke 18. I'm going to read 1 through 8. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint. Because if you don't pray, you'll faint. You'll give up. You'll give in. You'll give out. Saying there was in a city a judge who had feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said unto himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry? Day and night unto him, though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Will he find people still trusting God, still praying, still holding on to the horns of the altar? Jesus places prayer in a judicial setting, even in Isaiah 43 and 26, he encourages us to come into the courts of heaven in like manner. We are exalted to call God to remembrance of his word and his promises. When we do this, we are presenting our case before the court of heaven, asking to be justified and exonerated. We are petitioning the courts of heaven to move on our behalf and bring deliverance to us when we pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord and to our circumstances. God must be the center of attraction and prayer is the path that leads to God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. When prayer is our number one priority, our prayers will shape our characters as to affect not only our lives, but the lives of others that we come in contact with. That's only when we pray. That's only when we pray. Hallelujah! Our highest source of illumination and spiritual enlightenment is found in prayer. It ain't found in Bible study. It's found in prayer. Much time spent with God is the secret to all successful living and praying. Praise the Lord. Those who have the most power, if 
powerful effect on the world for Christ and his kingdom of those who have made it a priority to spend much quality time alone with God in prayer. The act of praying is the very highest energy of which the human mind is capable. Praying is a total consecration of all our faculties. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus rose early. He rose early before daybreak and went to a solitary place, place to pray. David said, early will I seek thee. The men and women who have done the most for God in this world have been praying on their knees early in the morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If God is not acknowledged first in our thoughts and efforts in the morning, he will not get the preeminence that he deserves. Praise the Lord. If he's not first, he ain't there. God takes no second place to nobody. Praise the Lord. It is impossible to keep our spirit in harmony with the divine nature, without much prayer. Prayer freshens the heart and keeps it in tune with God and in sympathy with the souls of mankind. You'll have a burden for souls when you pray. Oh, yes, you will. Praise the Lord. Prayer and devotion are united. There is no real prayer without devotion and no devotion without real prayer. It is the power of prayer that makes saints holy characters. Wait, it is the power of prayer that makes saints, period. Holy characters are formed by the power of prayer because prayers never die. Prayers don't die. Praise the Lord. Praying brings wisdom. It broadens and strengthens our mind. Our thought is not only brightened and clarified in prayer. Sometimes you need clarity. But thought is born in prayer. Not only will God give you clarity on something you're concerned about, he will open you to new revelations. Thought is born in prayer. We must speak words of faith. Speak words of faith which cancel out words of negativity. Amen. The word speak used in the Bible in this sense is an intransitive verb. It means to make a request or claim. A claim is a demand or request for something considered due to you. So when you speak, you are making a claim for something that's due to you. You're not just throwing words out there. Amen. So we have a right to speak over our life, to speak over our situation, to speak over our family, to speak over the atmosphere of our environment. Amen. Praise the Lord. We can speak those things that be not as though they are. Praise the Lord. Worry and doubt are canceled out when we become more contemplative. What does contemplate to mean? A person whose life is devoted to prayer. A person whose life is devoted to prayer involving quiet and serious thought for a period of time. Not making demands, not making petitions, quiet and serious thought for a period of time. You got to find a prayer closet and let God search your heart. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our prayer closet is more important than our public prayers or our study or our library. Our prayer closet. Why did Jesus say go in the closet and shut the door? Because when you go in the closet and shut the door, you don't want nobody to hear what you're saying because it's between you and God. Now you can be honest. You can tell God all of your dirty little secrets. You can tell God everything because you shut the door. Public prayer, anybody can pray in public. Praise the Lord. You're not serious in public. It sounds good. But when you get in the closet, 
you close the door. Now you can be real with God. The closet time. Praise the Lord. Prayer time deserves the best of our time and not just a fragment of our time when it's snatched away from business and other engagements of life. So we're going to pull a little time out. Oh, I got a little time over here. I got a little time over there. No, it should be number one priority. Amen. Praise the Lord. We talk more than we pray. We socialize more than we pray. Amen. We complain more than we pray. We get on the phone more than we pray. We do other stuff more than we pray. Why do you have to wait till trouble hit to pray? Praise the Lord. Prayer must enter into the heart and draw from the soul. Prayer has to enter your heart, not just your head. And then it draws from the soul. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Praise the Lord. Talking to people about God is a good thing. But talking to God for people is a greater thing. You can witness. You can talk to people about God. You can give your testimony. That's a good thing. But to get on your knees and to talk to God for people is a greater thing. Praise the Lord. Prayer is spiritual work. And human nature does not like taxing spiritual work. Prayer is humbling work. It abases intellect and pride. It crucifies vainglory and it signs our spiritual bankruptcy. You're spiritually bankrupt when you pray. Oh, blessed be the name. It is easier not to pray than to be confronted with our issues. Remember, I talked about a narcissistic spirit. You know what they'll do? They'll transfer their spirit to you so they don't have to deal with the issue. You're talking about the issue. Of, oh, you know, Pastor, I'm going through so much. So now all of a sudden, so you can shift the conversation to how you're hurting now. So I won't talk about the real issue. So you're going to dump your pain on me to pull my sympathy. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's easier not to pray than to be confronted with our issues. The little estimate, the little, the little, the little estimate we put on prayer is evident from the little time we give to it. It ain't important. Why it's not important? You don't, put, you don't spend no time in it. It don't mean nothing till you get in trouble. No, no, no. No ministry, no ministry can succeed without much praying. And this praying must be fundamental and ever increasing. Every decision should be bathed in prayer. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. This ain't no shout message. Without a due measure of prayer and private devotions, I'm talking about in your prayer closet, our soul will grow lean. If you ain't praying, your soul going to grow lean, period. Fervent, effectual prayer calls serious attention. It calls for serious attention and serious time. Why is the world in the state of sin? People not praying. Church not praying. Because the Bible says, my people that are called by my name, should themselves and pray. We're doing everything but praying. Praise the Lord. It takes good quality time in prayer to receive the full flow of God's spirit. Praise the Lord. You can operate in a, in a gift for so long. But to get the full flow of God's spirit, it's going to take some prayer in a secret place. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It takes time in the secret place to get the full revelation of God. Praise the Lord. More time and early hours for prayer would be manifested in a holier lifestyle. A holy life would not be so rare or such a difficult thing if our devotions were not so short and hurried. A shabby, undisciplined life is a result of a neglected prayer life. 
your life is shabby and undisciplined is because you're not praying. Our ability to stay with God in our prayer closet measures our ability to stay with God when we're out the closet. Amen. Why are you, why you falling? Un, a a double-minded man is unstable. What does unstable mean? That means you're going to fall under pressure. You cannot support pressure. You cannot support weight. You're unstable. You're unstable. Amen. So it's going to show up in our life outside of the closet if we're not spending time in the closet. The disciples did not ask Jesus to teach them to preach or to teach or to hoop and holler or to sing. They asked him to teach them or to, or to perform miracles. He asked them to teach them how to pray. Why? Because it's something about your prayer that I need to learn. And we have mimicked the prayer, but it still didn't work. So it got to be more to it than just doing what you did. Amen. Now. Oh, oh, should I read this? I wrote something down. I'm going to read it anyway. I wrote it down. If I wrote it, I need to read it. Now, if Jesus was invited to one of our so-called prayer breakfasts, Jesus would leave the building. Prayer breakfast. Ain't no prayer breakfast. Do everything but pray. You eat, you talk, you socialize. Praise the Lord. Now you see, now you see the state that we're in. It's not a prayer breakfast, it's a breakfast gathering social event. Because you do everything but pray. That's not a prayer breakfast. Jesus, Elvis left the building, Jesus would leave the building. I thought y'all was praying. I came ready to pray. I got my prayer shawl on, got everything, got my pillow. Y'all sitting down eating. Y'all talking, y'all socializing. Praise the Lord. It's the truth. Amen. It's the truth. Praise the Lord. I'm going to preach the truth regardless. It's the truth. Jesus will leave the building. It's not, a prayer. It's, not a, it's not a prayer breakfast. It's a breakfast. Period. Now, don't apologize for it. The apostles gave themselves to prayer, which is the most difficult thing to get men and women to do is to give themselves to prayer. They give themselves to everything else. They'll come to a concert. They'll come to any other thing, but people don't want to pray. First lady asked for prayer last Saturday at the church, mandatory prayer. My wife and I and two other people showed up, four people. It's the truth. Praise the Lord. You see the state we're in? We can do everything but pray. We can go here. We can go there. We can. They line up at the Texans game right now. They four hours early. The game is four hours from nine. People already lined up at Reliance Stadium. People can go to a social event. They can go to a social gathering. They can go here. They can go there. They can do everything else. They can get up early and catch a flight. They can do whatever they need to do at four o'clock in the morning. You try to get people to pray and they won't. Why? Because it's not important until you get in trouble. You wait till all hell break loose. Now all of a sudden you're praying and you're crying. Oh, God said, let me check your bank account. You don't have, no, you don't have nothing in there. You just wrote a hot check. You, don't, you, you didn't deposit nothing in, in, in no timber in heaven. Let, let me look at your credit report. Lord, I said I was going to, okay, let me, let me check your credit. You said, but you didn't pay this bill. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. You said, Lord had to get on me. I told her, I said, you know what? I said, this job is stressing me out. I said, Lord, I want to be able to retire so I can sp I have time to study and spend time in prayer. I've been retired four years. I said, I need to study and spend time with prayer. And God really got on me a couple weeks ago. He said, you know what? You're praying. You're studying. You're doing, you're doing a whole lot of studying. I need you to do more praying. You ask for the time. You got time. I have no excuse. I got no excuse. That's why God woke me up. He said, you need to pray more. I'm praying more. You know why? I have no excuse. No excuse. None of us have excuse. Prayer must be, you don't have to be retired. Prayer must be your priority. Amen. We find time for what we want to do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Elvis just left the building. Praise the Lord. I thought y'all was praying. I came here. I had my pillar. Had everything. 
I, I guess I should have bought a napkin to put around my neck. Amen. Praise the Lord. Since we eat, ain't nothing wrong with eating. I'm just making a point. Praise the Lord. Now, the apostles gave themselves to prayer, which is the most difficult thing for men and women to do. Prayer is a lost art and out of date for many people. The greatest benefactor this age could have is a man or woman of God who would bring prayer back to the church. I'm going to repeat that again. The greatest benefactor this age could have is not a good politician. It's a man or woman of God who will bring prayer back to the church. Prayer has left the building, y'all. We pray when all hell breaks loose and everything falls. Oh, God, why is this happening? Oh, God, do this, do that. Oh, Lord, this is, this is falling apart. And God been warning us all along. The reason it's falling apart is because y'all not praying. Because he said, if my people that are called by my name will arm themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their iniquity, their hidden sin, and nobody know about but them, repent of that, then I'll heal from heaven. I'll forgive their sin first. We praying for God to heal the land, heal our families, get our families saved, and we got issues because we're not praying. It says the effectual fervent prayer. Fervent. Amen. Pastor said one time, let God put a date on it. Okay, you, you got two weeks to live. I bet you pray now. You just got cancer. I bet you pray now. Praise the Lord. I bet you pray now. But why wait till it gets to that point to pray? The Bible says men should always pray because if you don't, you'll faint. Praise the Lord. Amen. Prayer is vital in that it is the heart and life of the church. Amen. It's the heart and the life of the church. You will hear from God if God will hear from you. Amen. You waiting on God. God waiting on you. You'll hear from God if God will hear from you and not just when you're in trouble. Praise the Lord. Don't let things that God wants to change go unchanged because you don't pray. Amen. Amen. See, God has two wills. He has a conditional will. He has an unconditional will. The unconditional will means whether you pray or not, I don't care what you do, whether you obey or not, God still made up his mind. He's going to do it regardless. It's unconditional will. Then there's a conditional will to where it's contingent upon our covenant and how we respond to the covenant. If you're going to pray, God said, if you'll pray, I'll do this. Amen? So he has a conditional will. So don't let things that God wants to change go unchanged because you don't pray, and then you complain it. Pray. Why are you complaining? Praise the Lord. God's will must be prioritized over our will. You want God to get into your mix and get into your Kool-Aid. Amen. You want God to bless something that, you, that he didn't ordain. Not when it's messed up, you want him to fix it. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and, what, and his righteousness. And all these other details of your life, I'll take care of it. Praise the Lord. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you a secret. Whenever you get to the secret place and you decide you want to get close to God and you say enough is enough, I don't want to be left to go through the tribulation. I want to make sure my heart is right. I need to feel your presence. Whenever you get into that secret place, all hell going to break loose in your life because the devil don't like it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. But you got to press on towards the mark of the high God. Amen. Forgetting those things that are behind. That's what Paul said. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So, God's will must be prioritized over our will, over our agenda. Amen. God's will must be first. We exist for him. He does not exist for us. We think God is a butler. God's going to run everything. God don't exist for us. We exist for him. He created us for him. Amen. Praise the Lord. When we pray, we must believe that God knows what he's doing, even when we don't like what he's doing. 
Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. We must have confidence to believe that anything we ask according to his will, he hears us and he will respond. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to have communion. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Yes, he is. Give him the glory. Let's do him. Amen. Amen. David said, I, I early will I seek thee. Oh, how wonderful it is to start your day with Jesus. Start your day with Jesus. Just a little talk with Jesus will make it all right. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to get ready to have, to have communion. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Let's worship God for a minute. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord God. God, we thank you, Lord. Oh, God, you worthy. You worthy, God. God, you worthy. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, God, we just acknowledge you, Lord, in all our ways. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, Lord. You didn't have to do it, but you did. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. God, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. Thank you for breath in our bodies, Lord. Many didn't wake up today, Lord. Oh, God, forgive us for all our sins. Oh, blot out all our transgressions. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, dear God, renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Forgive me for not praying like I should. Forgive me for not worshiping like I should. In the name of Jesus. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. God, we thank you right now. Thank you, Lord. Your mercies are renewed day by day. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I could have died in my sins. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God, you worthy. God, you worthy. You're worthy to be praised. God, you're worthy. God, you're worthy. We acknowledge you in all our ways, God. We acknowledge you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for having mercy. Thank you for being patient with us, Lord. God, even when we're unfaithful, you're still faithful, Lord. Forgive us for our prayerlessness, Lord. Forgive us for our prayerlessness, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Remember our families. Remember our unsaved loved ones, Lord. God, remember those that are backslidden state. Remember those, God. Oh, God, those we come in contact with, Lord. God, you said the gospel is the power, of God, that brings salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and then to the Greek and to the Gentile. Oh, God, the gospel is good news. God, help us to, to, to present the message of the gospel to a dying world, to let them know that there's hope. Hope and the hope is in Jesus Christ. God, don't let us stop praying. Don't let us stop interceding. Oh, God, for our family members, our relatives, Lord, in the name of Jesus, our government, Lord. Oh, those in high places, Lord, our school system, Lord. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, God, don't let us be weary in well-doing. God, because we will reap one day. If we faint not. But you said if we don't pray, we will faint. We will faint. We will give in. We will give in. We will give up, Lord. We will give out, Lord. Oh, but the race is not given to the swift or the strong, but to all that endure to the end. Oh, God, help us to endure to the end. Help us to endure to the end. Help us to endure to the end. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to get ready. We're going to get ready. We're going to get ready to have communion. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to have communion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm going to read. 
Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God be the glory. God be the glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to start reading while it's passing it out. I'm going to read from uh, 1 Corinthians 11 chapter. I'm going to start with verse 17. It says, Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not that you come together, not for the better, but for the worse. But first of all, when you come together in church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat. Amen. To eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, every one taketh before the other his own supper, and one is hungry and another is drunken. What, have you not houses to eat and to drink in, or despise ye the church of God, and shame them which have not? Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I'm going to get ready to read verse 23. That was verse 22. Amen. Praise the Lord. It says, for I <clears throat> have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, thank you, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. To God be the glory. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We're going to get ready and dismiss. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to get ready and dismiss. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just bow before you in our submission, giving you thanks, giving you glory, and giving you honor, Lord. God, we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, all of your benefits, Lord. God, you just keep on blessing us in spite of, Lord. God, and we thank you. Thank you, Lord, that we didn't die in our sins. We could have died in the heat of our worst passions, in the middle of our worst sin, Lord, but you extended a hand of love and mercy, and we're so thankful. God, you just keep blessing us. You just keep making ways. And, Lord, so many times, the only time we go to you in prayer, we're going to you complaining. Lord, we are complaining, wanting you to change situations. But you said, Lord, if we will seek you, that you will, that we will find you. Lord, if we will go to you, then you'll come to us. Lord, but Lord, help us, Lord. Help us to realize, God, that this prayer is all about relationship. God, you had instituted prayer because you love us so much that you want to communicate with us, Lord. God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for not giving up on us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for not turning us over to the enemy. Thank you, Lord, for not exposing us. There's times we should have been exposed, but we weren't, Lord. You gave us space to repent. You gave us time to recover, Lord. And, Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we pray for our, our, our heathen 
family members, Lord, that don't want nothing from God. God, I pray that you would arrest them in a the spirit. Lord, you said that love covers a multitude of sin. Lord, we don't want to judge them, Lord. We just want to pray for them, Lord. God, we ask that you would extend your hand of love and mercy towards them just like you did for us. And, Lord, we ask that you would just bless the kingdom of grace ministries, Lord. Bless the prayer line, Lord. Those that are going through, Lord, help them to realize, Lord, that you are the source of life. You're the source of everything. You're not just a resource when they get in trouble, but you are the source, Lord. Help them to go to the source, Lord. And if it's something that you got your finger on, Lord, help us to address it, to turn from it, repent of it, Lord, and not go back to it. And now to him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless through the throne of grace. May the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, rest, rule, and abide. God direct, keep, and protect us now, henceforth, and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. And again, I say amen. You are dismissed. Praise the Lord.